Hello, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jason Putz, a physical therapist, and this is Ted Cruzy, physical therapist as well at Physical Therapy Solutions in Dyersville, Iowa. Uh, we've uh, gathered some dynamic stretching and, and warm-up activities for uh, coaches in the area, and uh, we'd just like to share them with people around the world as far as uh, providing some inter injury prevention aspects for sport, uh, as well as a tool um, and a guideline for coaches to kind of look at uh, what they need for individual sports uh, from a dynamic standpoint. We use dynamic stretches to allow the athlete to warm up their muscles and increase blood flow to those muscles to loosen up and also decrease the injury rate. Dynamic stretches do a great job of maintaining the elastic component of the muscles and tendons which static stretching can remove. So the dynamic stretches does a good job to uh, decrease injury rate and also improve your athletic performance. With our intro into dynamic stretching, we really want to emphasize to the coaches and to the athletes that are watching this that technique is key. Um, we don't want you to just go out there and kind of go through the motions. You really, to have good carryover to sport and athletic competition, you really need to emphasize technique. Uh, we'll describe that with each, uh, each exercise that we're doing, um, but as well with coaches, I think it's very important that as you're watching these kids and teaching these kids the proper technique, you really want to look, look at their alignment and make sure that they're doing everything properly as we've kind of described with each uh, individual exercise. Here we're looking for the athlete to really come up on the big toe and drive on up. And then as the athlete comes back, you're looking at alignment to maintain his balance. It's also important for the athlete to really drive that knee and pull it up towards his chest to get a good glute stretch. For the butt kick on the toes, the athlete's going to again drive up onto his toes, grab the ankle, and kick backwards. It's important to keep his chest aligned upright and not lean forward. We're trying to get a good quad and rectus femoris stretch, um, so maintaining upright alignment is key. You can see here our athlete does have a slight forward lean that we're trying to really adjust for and uh, keep his chest back as he's pulling that leg back and trying to maintain good balance and, and proprioception when he's on one leg. With teeter-totters, we're really focusing on the hamstring stretching on the leg that he's standing on um, and really working for a good balance and core strength as he's going forward. Really trying to bend at the hip and not the back. By maintaining a good back or a flat back, the athlete will get the best hamstring stretch, but also um, avoid any chances of injury while doing the stretch. You really want your athlete to try to maintain good single leg standing balance as they're going through this motion as well. Exercise. The inchworm here is they're kind of stretching their feet when they're coming on up and then you see we really want them to bend from their hips to really get a good hamstring stretch as they come on up and truly flattening themselves out to get the core and come back up in reverse fashion and walk yourself back out. So the athlete can now add in another component in which they allow their hips to drop down to the floor when they're in the push-up position and get some lumbar extension. Um, just another position they can can loosen up and uh, prepare for prepare for that their athletic activity. High knee with external rotation. The athlete's again going to grab this time their knee and shin or ankle 
and raise up onto the toes, focusing on good alignment and staying straight forward. With this stretch, we're now stretching the hip rotators and calling those into play. Once again, your athlete's on single leg stance for a long period of time, so you really want them to try to maintain their balance uh, while they're up there on their tiptoe. And here you get the option to see the, the athlete really turn and rotate that hip for that true stretch of the rotators. Here with the uh, lunge and twist, you can get the athlete to get the back leg as the hip flexor stretching, as well as the rotation, getting the obliques to kind of get ready and to be able to perform for an athletic uh, competition. There's a lot of different ways the athlete may cheat or perform this stretch without uh, maximizing uh, what you're trying to get out of it. So really watch the athlete's speed as they're coming as he's coming at you. You can see how he's going to rotate through the trunk and really stretch through that opposite hip flexor um, and into the quad and rectus femoris. As a coach, you really want to look for them over-exaggerating and uh, not uh, performing proper alignment when they do this. You can see that he's doing more of a lean back than a rotation. Um, and then all he's looking at the, the knee to make sure that they're in proper alignment when they're coming straight forward. Here with the lateral lunge, we're starting to get the hip adductors and abductors loosening up, get a little rotation into the transverse plane as well while we're warming up these muscles. The nice thing about adding this stretch is the, the different planes that you're starting to work. So the rotation gets the transverse plane, and then the lateral lunge gets the frontal plane, and just another component that uh, your athlete will put themselves in while they're, while they're performing. You want to watch your athlete's technique here, make sure they're sitting back, like they're sitting down into a chair, um, not lunging too far forward over top, over the front of their knee. The arm circles are uh, really trying to loosen up the shoulders and starting out small circles, working bigger, as well as starting out slow, uh, working to increase your speed as you're going around. Uh, start forward and then we will reverse the same pattern backwards um, Really looking for your athlete to keep his head straight ahead uh, and maintain the good alignment there Your athletes going to be loosening up and mobilizing the shoulder or glenohumeral joint and also the scapular thoracic joint on the backside With self hugs, you're going to have the athlete starting nice and slow, reaching around across them. Um, you're getting a good stretch on the pec muscles as the arms goes back, and also on the posterior cuff and posterior shoulder as they wrap around to the front. Again, look for your student athlete's uh, neck not to protrude out as the arms go behind and retract back and forth, but rather keep a good alignment looking straight ahead. Forearm jumps, you're going to have the athlete uh, starting in a squat position, jumping forward, landing heel to toe in a quiet, uh, in a quiet fashion. Coaches, your cue is going to be that heel to toe landing, landing in the squat position and being as quiet as possible in a soft landing. You can really have a good viewpoint as the athlete comes at you and his knees are staying nice and wide, his knees are staying over his toes, and he's landing in that squat position. This is a position that female athletes will um, most likely get themselves into here that our athlete is rolling in and landing it with his knees rolled in. Uh, you'll see a lot of um, teenage female athletes that are weak in their gluteals that will end up doing this. This is something that we want to avoid. With lateral slides, with floor touches, 
we're just once again moving in the frontal plane, getting the hips down low, and starting to loosen up the low back as well as uh, your athlete touches the floor, squatting, and loosening up the low back. Karaoke, the athlete's again moving in the frontal plane towards the side. And here we've got a lot of different motion going on. He's moving in the frontal plane side to side. He's bringing that trail hip up and across. And you can also see some transverse plane motion with his upper body. Double leg line hop. Coaches, if you're in a court sport, you can use a line on the floor. You'll have the athlete keeping their feet together, bouncing side to side. You can see how this will have some excellent carryover to their sports as they're explosively um, jumping through the, using their gas rocks um, and up into the knees and quads and preparing them for their sport. Single leg hops are uh, similar to the double leg hop, but now you're just emphasizing uh, single leg stance. Again, looking for alignment. When they land, you want their knee to be right over top of their foot. Um, you don't want, especially the female athletes, you don't want their knees rolling in uh, in good control with the takeoff and the land. With bounding, we're really trying to overemphasize that running pattern. Both the shoulders and arms and, and hips are really overextending and really reaching on out with good alignment.